Welcome back to week two. My name is Alexander Röbel. And with this unit seven, I will continue to introduce business partner and CBI. I'll be, be putting some emphasis on certain points to be considered in, in the CBI process in particular. So let's start. Once you start planning a conversion to SAP S4HANA, you have to think about your project organization. I personally recommend building and establishing a dedicated team or at least assign a person that is responsible for business partner and CVI topics during your conversion project. This is a cross-function team that communicates with all parties making use of customer and vendor master data. These are financial with accounts payable and receivable, sales for the customers, purchasing for the vendors, and very often the human resource department is involved as their employee master data is to be converted into business partners. When synchronizing business partners, the team has to focus mainly on two areas. One is obvious. It is the mapping and conversion of existing master data into business partner. The other topic is rather far away at the beginning of the project, but needs to be considered as well. The team always has to take future needs of S4HANA into account. For example, the business partner will be the leading object for master data. And they also have to take care of the required steps after S4HANA conversion. We are often asked how much time is required to execute the business partner synchronization. Well, there is no fixed answer to this question. We recommend starting as early as possible once you have decided to go for an S4HANA conversion. We always try to prevent having the CVI topic on the critical path for your S4HANA project. This is because the CVI project has the potential to extend the timeline. There could be several reasons for this. For example, data quality issues that are only detected during project runtime. What can also happen is that functional departments come up with specific or more detailed requirements for their master data that now need to be introduced into the business partner design. In some of my recent projects, we started with a well-defined scope, but the world around didn't stop moving. So we recognized during runtime that there are new applications to be implemented that require business partner as well. These kind of projects also affect the duration of business partner implementation. We also need to consider the project plan for S4HANA conversion. Usually, the S4HANA conversion is checked in one or more sandboxes as a copy of the productive system. As long as CVI is not activated in productive system, we have to synchronize all customers and vendors in each sandbox. In addition, we also like to test our business partner synchronization in separate sandboxes. Yeah. Creation and synchronization of these sandboxes are also have to be scheduled and consequently extend the overall project duration. Why do we recommend to go for tests with separate sandboxes? Sandbox conversions are there to reduce potential errors in productive system. Furthermore, we need indications for the technical runtime for the business partner synchronization. This is to schedule and refine the productive cutover. If you remember, I already mentioned that we recommend a business downtime. This target, the target is to keep this downtime as short as possible, but as long as required. Usually, we have to take care of two types of sandbox systems. As already shown in the previous slide, there are sandboxes for business partner synchronization and CVI only. For example, to check the result of full data cleansing activities. The other type of sandbox is for S4HANA conversion. The individual project decision determines whether you require both types of sandboxes or more merge both activities from the first sandbox onwards. Once you feel secure with the respective settings, you can synchronize business partner in the development and quality system. 
When these systems are converted to S4 HANA, you can implement the required customizing for the S4 HANA systems here. Yeah. These settings are recorded in the post-conversion transports that I have mentioned in my previous unit. Let me say a few words about business downtime for business partner synchronization. Technically, it would be possible to execute business partner synchronization in a business uptime, meaning in parallel to normal daily business. However, we recommend a downtime to execute this exercise. This is for three main reasons. First is performance. Business partner synchronization can run in the background but consumes a certain number of dialog tasks that might be required. Usually, there are interfaces that exchange master data. Business partner synchronization could trigger interfaces to create or change these master data. As it is a mass processing, this could overload and block these interfaces as all customers and or vendors are transferred. And stopping these interfaces during uh, the business uptime it is also not an option, as real changes are not transferred during this time. And the third reason could be that we might need to control and adapt certain settings to achieve our number range designs. And it's not only numbering that requires a certain setup, as there is also an option to suppress several checks for mass synchronization only. I have already talked about numbering several times. With the next slides, I want to explain the options that are available. That are available. Here you can see the, th the CVI that we have to talk about three objects. It's a matter of fact that classic SD and MM transactions will still use customer and vendor master data. And as for HANA, the leading object will be the business partner. Newer applications will use this master data object. The picture shows the situation when using different numbers for all three of these objects. If possible, we recommend to harmonizing the numbers. In fact, this might be complicated in case of S4HANA conversions, as our experiences show that. We have to take overlaps in the numbering of customers and vendors into account. If you would like to merge customer and vendor to one common business partner, you would usually have to decide which object is the leading one in terms of numbering, or you keep them separately to ensure the same number for their business partners. In my projects, I personally discuss the same number, but do not insist on having it. This is because there are very often other applications in place that require business partners with their own concurrent numbering requirements. The following pictures uh, explain some options for number range design. Here, in this case, we decided not to merge customer and vendor to the same business partner, in case they would be the same legal entity. Both master data objects do not overlap in numbering. So it is quite easy to keep the same number for the business partner. Please keep in mind, you must change the synchronization direction in S4HANA. With this change, the business partner becomes the leading object also for number assignment. To achieve the same number for both objects, the leading object gets, gets an internal number range assigned. The dependent object requires an external number range with exactly the same limits. In this variant, we decided not to merge the same customer and vendor to one business partner. But here, we have assigned a completely independent numbering of all objects. Every object has its own internal number range. No additional setup would be required after S4HANA conversion. Here, we have decided to merge the same legal entity of customer and vendor to one business partner. In this case, we go for the customer number as leading number. The vendor number remains different. The number range of the dependent object must be set to external 
in this case. In ECC, it is the number range for business partner. In S4HANA, it would be the number range for the customer master. Finally, we have the case where we merge and do not care for the same numbers of any of the affected master data objects. Each object is assigned to an internal number range. These four slides showed the common options for numbering. This has to be discussed on a project basis. The first step is to document all used number ranges. Here you should check the current intervals as well as historic data. It might be that the number range set up in the respective system has been changed. Accordingly, an analysis of the existing data is necessary. In the CVI cookbook mentioned in my previous unit, you will find an Excel spreadsheet to simplify and accelerate this exercise. So, with that, I will close this unit about tips and tricks based on our project experiences and also my presentations about business partner and customer vendor integration. This concludes the units of week two. Thank you for listening and goodbye.